lobby lesson number five. Today we're going to be breaking down Chaturanga Dandasana, which means four-limbed staff pose. That is the low push-up that you've heard it called. Um, so we'll have Bradley get started in our Chaturanga prep. Um, and he'll show you a few different variations of what chaturanga looks like, how to strengthen to get yourself to be strong enough in the shoulders and the pecs, triceps to eventually lower down. Um, and this is the fifth or the fourth pose in our sun salutation A. So just continuing on with that. So all yours, Brad. Great. All right. We're gonna we're gonna start this one a little different than what you in class. We're going to start out right down in our bellies, hands at your sides, in close to the ribs, but not underneath. You want your elbows up, maybe even squeeze them together a little bit. So I should probably start at the bottom. Curl the, curl the toes under. And a note on hand placement here. You want the palms of your hand to be able to reach the floor, I mean flat on the floor, or the mat. But you want them back as far as they'll go as well. There's a place where you're the heel of your hand will start rising up. That's too far. Come forward just a little bit. It'll vary by everybody's wrist is kind of why I'm talking about it so much. All right, so first thing, a couple little tricks here. Press into the heels. Probably can't see it, but that lifts my thighs up off of the floor. And then to work on strength in this one, let me suggest that you, number one, press into your heels, get your thighs up a little bit, lift your chin, look forward, relax in your shoulders just a bit, draw them down. And then with an exhale, you press into your hands just enough so you get light. You don't even need to hover here. This will be plenty of work, believe me. And breathe. Maybe see if you can take three, maybe five breaths, keeping the elbows squeezed in, keeping the shoulders away from your ears, and keeping a strong pressure into the floor. And then come down and relax a bit. Whew, take a breath. <laughs> okay. Again, I can be able to see this, and, and we're playing with new camera setup, so whatever. What I'm going to do this time is, is actually hover, so extend through the heels, will bring my thighs up, a little bit of a hip, and then press in just enough to bring the belly up off the floor, the gaze forward, you can actually kind of feel my shirt brushing the floor, Chaturanga Dandasana. It's a tough posture, <laughs> builds upper body strength builds core strength, and the center of the body. Let me take you through the series on this one. We talked about starting off in posture number one was Tadasana, and then our forward fold, Tadasana, Arda. And this is how we usually get into Chaturanga during class. We plant the hands, float the feet back, and lower down. All right, so that's the hard way to do it. Um, that's the, uh, I'm not gonna call it the right way to do it. And that's how it fits into the sun, the sun Salutation A series that we're kind of building our way into one posture at a time. Julie's gonna show you a couple other versions. I'm gonna catch my breath and maybe pick at what she's doing. <laughs> we'll see what happens, that's what lives about. Okay, so um, when I first started practicing about two and a half years ago, I 100% could not do a chaturanga. I flop on the floor, smack my chin, like absolutely not good. Um, and it took me a long time to get strong enough. So just be patient. It does take time and some modification. So one thing I look back on and notice is when I would take a yoga class, for the first half of class, as much as I could do a proper chaturanga, just lowering straight down, I would. But as soon as I started to flop down like that, I would bring my knees down to the floor, shift my shoulders over my wrists, gaze forward, and still engage my thighs, engage my belly, press the shoulders away from my body, and then exhale lower through the triceps, bending the elbows, and then moving on to the rest of that vinyasa. <laughs> so that's how I started to get stronger. Um, another thing that really helped me was when 
learning the difference between a push-up and a chaturanga, they are definitely different. So a push-up works a lot more in the pectoral muscles, the fronts of the shoulders, where we actually don't want to bear weight. Um, and the, tr the chaturanga works a lot into the triceps, the backs of the arms here. So, first the push-up, hands are wider, and as you exhale, the elbows go out. You can already see me start to collapse into my low back. I'm just not strong enough to do a push-up comfortably. So push-up out to the sides, lower down. Chaturanga, I'm working on it. Chaturanga is different because we rotate the inner elbows forward, middle finger is straight forward on the mat, pressing into the thumb edge of the hands, leaning forward slightly so we have that straight arm, and then exhale, Lower down. Elbows bend to about 90 degrees, squeezing them together. Ladies are always a little bit high <laughs> right here. I don't know why. Good. So just knowing the difference and knowing where you actually do need to get strong. Some of us need to get stronger in the pecs. Some of us need to get stronger in the triceps. Maybe it's a combination of both. Or maybe you just didn't know the alignment yet and you are strong enough. So those are just some tips that help me strengthen back down onto your belly here. The uh, Another one that will strengthen you up a bit here is the chaturanga I was showing, kind of the classic version. Step your hand, dip your hands back till the heels of your hands want to lift off the mat and then bring them forward just a little bit. So yeah, they're way back there by your waist. <laughs> I know, this is going to be tough, right? Yeah, press into the heels to lift the thighs up a little bit and then press into the hands. Whether you lift or not, you're going to work. Try not to let your butt lift up. Try to keep your belly firm, keep your tail kind of tucked under press into the hands. Pull the elbows together behind your back. She's not moving, but she's working. It's there's hard. Lot, there's a lot of work in this posture. And just doing this for a half a dozen breaths, take a little break and do another half dozen more, let yourself down when you need to, will build strength not only in the triceps, but across the front of the chest, the shoulder blades, up here into the trapezius, the whole, no, not the whole, but most of the upper body is going to take a serious building in this one. You show us one more thing, and I got one more little bit of release here that I didn't think about. Welcome to live video again. All right. So, doing push-ups, like Julie was doing at the beginning, but really any of this chaturanga work will eventually get you tight across the front of the chest here. Just a real quick one. Strap. Uh, you can do this with a towel. I learned how to do this with a towel. Uh, the belt on my bathrobe works great. Anything. A long sleeve shirt will do. Take the strap up overhead. Let your arms slide out wide until they can rotate back behind. And get them just into that juicy spot. Pretty much stand just like this. It stretches the front of the, the chest open a lot up here where Chaturanga is going to make you sore. So if you're doing a bunch of these, some rotations here just in that little magic spot will open up the front of the chest and get you a little release from some of the tension that this is going to build. If you want to get real yoga with this one, you take the legs out a little, maybe fold yourself in, rotate the arms up overhead, but we're not moving into Ashtanga yet. We'll get to that one later. Anyway, any more from you? Um, oh, yes. I wanted to show the knees, chest, chin oh, yeah. variations. So one of our super practiced yogis um, who is coming back after having a baby was in my class last night and she did knees, chest, chin, and I was so excited to see a student brave enough to honor their body where it's at. A lot of times we simply don't come down to our knees because of our ego. We're scared to, we think we'll look weak. So the best thing to do for knees, chest, chin is start by creating that diagonal line. So <clears throat> Pull your hips in, engage your belly, engage your thighs, and shoulders are over the wrist. Same thing, rotating the elbow, inner elbows forward. And then as you lower down, I see a lot of people stick their butt out. Try to stay firm. Exhale, lower, knees come down, then your chest comes down. Notice this is still chaturanga arms, and then your chin comes down. So it's sort of that same motion as when we were trying to 
press the ground away, it's that same activation. So just keep that in mind, that's also an option. Other than that, I'm Okay, this is one more <laughs> option. I got one more. I got one more. We do this one class every now and then. It makes the chaturanga action a little bit easier. So from tabletop, hands out, you know, underneath the shoulders, lift the right leg back behind you, or stay in your hands and knees. And simply bend your elbows back, keep them plugged in, and lower your chin down. Just a little short push up, your leg back behind you, make the great counterweight. Take some of the weight off. A lot of body weight to be lifting once you get both hips up, really in the plank pose. So even knees underneath a little bit here and kind of just holding in. You need to start at the level you're at, work with the strength you have. There's no sense in trying to do something that your body's just not really ready to do yet. So take it easy, build yourself into this one, be patient, give it some time, and uh, ask Katie, ask Julie, ask some of the long, thin, flexible girls around here. They'll tell you it's hard. It takes a while, but eventually, you know, they're all doing this thing in their pictures now. They've got to kick that tricep out there and <laughs> let you know it's in there. Anyway, I think that's what we got for today. Yep, enjoy the journey of getting stronger and namaste. Namaste. Bye. Maybe. Oh, there it is. <laughs>